If you can put your hands together as we welcome to the platform, Father Lupupa from the Matero Parish there, the Catholic Chase, Father Lupupa. Zambia is being saved. Zambia is saved. Zambia was saved. Zambia was being saved. Zambia shall be saved. I am greatly honored, Dr. Mumba, that you have accorded me five minutes to testify. Once upon a time, Dr. Mumba came to Charleston and uh, he attended mass as one of the political leaders trying to introduce himself to the people. And I told him a little story about him and me that when I was young, I completed school in 1986 and at that time, he was on the stage. I said, you know, you became my icon. In fact, I got so much inspired that I wanted to become a pastor. I ended up being a priest. <laughs> <laughs> so the victory ministries, his inspiration, which came, I think, without any doubt from the Lord, did not just come upon him, but upon so many of us young Zambians at that time. And we bought into that charism, that spirituality, that Zambia indeed shall be saved. When Dr. Chiluba came into power and he woke up and God put something upon his heart, and then he made that powerful declaration. I want to declare now, that was the day that Zambia was saved. So Zambia was saved. And then Dr. Mumba was removed from the pulpit. Why? Because God has a plan for this great nation. Before we cross into the promised land, I want you, my son, I have put something upon your heart. Can you go and do some cognizance? Can you be my spy? Can you go and see what is happening on the other side? And for many years, Dr. Mumba was on the other side trying to see how things are done. He became the vice president. He became a political leader. And today has brought us HH. And today has brought us GBM. And today has brought us everybody. Zambia is being saved. 
Now here is a message that God is putting upon my heart. And it feels so good. It feels so sweet. It feels so delicious. I see in Dr. Mumba a hybrid. A new kind of being. Like Obama, an African and an, a white man. Mixed together. A politician and a religious person. Mixed together. Bringing this side and this side. And bring... Hey! You don't know what is happening. For me, I am not saying Zambia shall be saved. Zambia is being saved. Zambia is saved. God is saving us. You see, when Zacchaeus was saved after being on the tree, and then the Lord Jesus said, Zacchaeus, you are worthy to have a face-to-face. -face. You are worthy to host me in your house. Zacchaeus, come down. You are not looking at me. You are looking at my bald head, if Jesus had a bald head. Come down, Zacchaeus. And then they walked home. And Jesus was sick. Salvation has come to Mongo. Salvation because Dr. Mumba now is ahead of us. And we are following. He's a general. Dr. Mumba, I'm behind you. I'm walking behind you. As you are walking, Zambia shall be saved. Victory ministries now is victory. That is how Dr. Mumba was, would, would preach. And he would jump and... <laughs> Hallelujah. When we were behind there with Dr. Mumba and then uh, the ushers, the big people came and said... Oh, um, um, this one has come. Can he come over? I said, oh, so he's here as well. Oh, the big people are here. Oh, this is Zambia shall be saved. Zambia is being saved. Dr. Mumba, next time we are going to have Kadas singing here. Forming the choir. Zambia shall be saved. Zambia is being saved. You can't get there from where you are. You have to get into Jesus. When you are in the light of Christ, when Christ shines upon you, then you will know truly the problems that Zambia is facing. They are not economic. They are not political. They are inbuilt. There are some things that are very deep-rooted. God shall give you wisdom. Jesus will tell you, now my son, now my daughter, move to serve my people. Moses had to leave the palace first. And went into the wilderness. After he had killed somebody. When he was in the wilderness. And then he saw a burning bush. And then he heard a voice. Moses remove your shoes. Where you are standing is a holy ground. And Moses removed his shoes. And then when he walked. He said Moses. Go. Go. Go down Moses. Tell them. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Dr. Mumba, hear the voice of God today. Let my people go. Let the heavens speak to you again. Let my people go. Let the Zambians, go. let the poverty leave them. Let the violence go. Hear afresh that which God put upon you. 
Today you are bringing us together. If it was an MMD rally, I wouldn't have come. Now you are going to gather us. Now you are going to bring us from the north and the south, from the east and the west. Bemba Tonga's job dying together. All of us will be at the same table. And after we have removed the meat with the toothpick, we shall eat the toothpick as well. I see what you are not seeing. Let me share with you what I'm seeing. This man is powerful. <laughs> this man is powerful. There is something special. There is something special. There is something special. There is something special. The hybridness in him. Is a transitional to some place. I see a transition. I see a transition. This is not permanent. There is something that is going to happen there. I thank God that you have aligned yourself with all the alliances and the alignments. Why? Because nobody has to remain. All of us have to move. Because Zambia. Because Zambia. And this is the testimony that I give when I became a Catholic priest. I realized I cannot just be Catholic. When I was in Charleston Parish, we did 21 days of prayer and fasting outside of the Catholic program. And people are saying, but this is not a Catholic way of doing things. I said, my priesthood is universal. I'm Pentecostal, I'm SDA, I'm Jehovah's Witness. And even when it comes to politics, I'm UPND, I'm PF, I'm FDD, I'm, 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 I'm everything. Zambia is going to be saved by all of us when we open our arms and we embrace each other as brother and sister. When we leave our differences, when we are in Christ, we know who we are. We see our value of being Zambian patriotic and we see even our neighbors, how much they need us. And then we are going to rely on that power that comes from above and God is going to give us that wisdom. And then we shall cross over to the other side. May God bless a new political leader, a new prophet, a new king upon you. May the anointing flow from above and confirm you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. That was uh, more than a testimony, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. Uh, Dr. Mumba, we forgot to tell Father Lupupa, you know, the Bible says a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. Hello? Bless the Lord. I said a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. So we should have said, Father Lupupa, five minutes in our time. <laughs> in Jesus' time, it can take five uh, I was down the line, but uh, we don't have much time now. I'm going to ask uh, Bishop Ruben Sambo to come and uh, introduce the speaker. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And it's a joy to have you here tonight. My task is very, very simple. It is to introduce the speaker in our meeting tonight. My elder brother, my mentor in many, many things, like uh, Father Lupupa said, he led us to love to preach. He is also my political mentor and arguably one of Zambia's greatest lights in terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Zambia's former vice president, president of Victory Ministries International, and also president of the movement for Mad Party Democracy, a party to which I belong and I am the vice president administration and I'm grateful for it. He will be speaking to us tonight. And before he does, let me just say a few things about tonight's service and also a few things about Zambia shall be saved. I think in this service tonight, we are in order to expect miracles to happen. After all, it's a service. We are in order to expect healings of the body. This is a healing evangelist we are before tonight. And he has seen many things and I've been with him in the countryside. And I have met many, many people who testify from everywhere. When you were preaching in such a crusade, that's how my mother's cancer disappeared. When you were preaching in this place, that's how I got saved. When you were preaching in that place, that's how my life became orderly again. And tonight we are honored to host here in this meeting, Dr. Nevis Mumba. We are in order to expect a prophetic word as he preaches. He is the same man that speaks with authority. And I have known this man many years now and very, very closely. I can speak for his undoubted integrity. And I'm sure the Lord would use him. Zambia shall be saved is not a religious mantra. I think Father Lupupa has ably said that. Zambia shall be saved is not a political slogan. It's not even an organization. As I have related to Dr. Nevis Mumba over the last few years, very closely as a friend, a brother, a young brother, I have found out that Zambia shall be saved is a life. Zambia shall be saved is the life and essence of this man, Never Sequila Mumba. And if he were to die today, and if I were present there, and maybe this is how I can put in the word to Mrs. Mumba in case he goes first. If I will be there, I will humbly ask that on the tomb of this man, on the headstone, should only be written these few words, Zambia shall be saved. Don't complicate it. Don't write where he was born. Don't write uh, which schools he went to. Don't write his critical as experts, technicians, officers, corporate leaders, Design, designers of answers, etc. This means that in his thinking, the church must transition like Father Lupupa has said. He sees a transition. I agree with you. The church must transition into being properly served and well informed. 23 years ago, Dr. Nevis Mumba took his Christian faith to politics and became the first clergy literally at his level to do so. And since then, many members of the clergy, including myself, have followed suit, uh, and, and on the continent, there are even many. Zambia has led the way. In Nigeria, for example, the current vice president, his honor, Reverend Yemi Osibanjo, is an ordained pastor, and he preaches literally every Sunday in his local church. In Liberia, the current vice president, Mrs. Taylor, 
is an ordained preacher in South Africa. The leader of the opposition Democratic Alliance, Musi Maimani, is an ordained pastor. And in South Africa still, the leader of the Christian Democratic Party, Reverend Kenneth Misho, is an ordained pastor who pastors the local church every day. While, in, while we're still in South Africa, his lordship, the chief justice of that country, Mukwen Mukwen, I think I'm pronouncing that name properly, is an ordained pastor himself in the redeemed church of God. In Malawi, the leader of the opposition, Reverend Dr. Chakwera, is an ordained Assemblies of God pastor. As a matter of fact, the immediate past uh, senior bishop of that church. And in Zimbabwe, the candidate for the consolidated opposition in the coming election, Mr. Chamisa Nelson, is also an ordained pastor, in, 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 you know, including the fact that he's a lawyer. The list is growing. Most of these men and women are, are not only close associates of Dr. Mumba, but are also in constant touch with him. And I've been present sometimes when they're exchanging phone calls, and they're always asking, how have you done it, big brother, that you're a man of God, you're a Christian, and you've been in politics? I sometimes feel like telling them it's been hard for him here in Zambia. But thank God that Zambia shall be saved. It is my singular and high honor this evening to invite to this pulpit my big brother, my mentor, the life itself, Dr. Nevis Mumba, to preach to us. Please be upstanding and welcome Dr. Nevis Mumba. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Wow. First of all, listening to Reverend Samuel, I'm one of the very few privileged people to listen to your own eulogy before you die. And uh, so there are not many that get this opportunity. My wife is being advised on how to behave on that day. They are sharing responsibilities long before that happens. Thank you, my dear brother. I feel humbled. I think you said too much. Now I don't know where to start. Because of time, and we are being recorded and being joined worldwide, I'm going to ask that please you may be seated so that I can use the next few minutes to welcome some of the dignitaries that have come to spend this evening with us. But let me start by thanking all of you for coming to join us for this very first in Lusaka, the Zambia Shall Be Served service. Father Lupupa, what you did is not what I expected. I was extremely comfortable that having a Catholic priest would not cause too much stir. But obviously, I was wrong. Thank you so much for inspiring us with the revelation that the Lord has given you concerning what God is doing in this country. I agree with you that God is at work in this country. And I'm in a hurry to preach tonight because there is a burden that I carry tonight. But I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you that have come to join us. I would like to acknowledge all of you that have come. I have not received all the lists of all the important people, which all of you are, that I can follow in order to thank you and to acknowledge you publicly. But from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the team that has worked so hard to put this thing together, thank you so much for coming to the house of God. We would like to acknowledge the presence of men of God. Some of them have actually come from outside this country. Uh, they flew in today. I know Pastor Piri, you flew in from South Africa this afternoon just to be here. 
and going back after the tomorrow, I suppose, and there are many others. But um, I would like to recognize the Reverend and Mrs. Moses Chiluba, friends of mine. When you hear come net, why don't you stand? When you hear come net, television, you hear Pastor Chiluba. When I was shouting Zambia shall be saved, he was shouting Zambia for Jesus. Those were the two themes, right? Many years ago. May I also take the opportunity to recognize somewhere in the crowd, he always does this to me, he hides, and that is Bishop John Mambo, a great friend of mine with his dear wife. Are they here? They came to greet me. I hope they are still here somewhere. There is Bishop. Give him a big hand of praise. He has been a great brother. And his wife, I call her my secretary general because she's so supportive. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Bishop Andy Peary. Uh, please stand. As I mention your name, stand. They'll clap and I'll go quickly. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop Jean Chama. Uh, is Bishop Jean here? There she is. Give the Lord a big hand. And may I also take this opportunity to recognize the team of Victory Ministries. Victory Ministries has a bishop for all our 52 churches under our ministry. We have a bishop, and that is Bishop Tobolo, and he's here today. He drove all the way from Kasama to come and join us with his dear wife. Where are you, Bishop Tobolo? There you are. Please give the Lord a hand. He's the bishop for the Victory Bible Churches. And also the Vice President of Victory Ministries, Pastor Ebo Tosi. Where are you with your dear wife? The Reverend Ebo Tosi. <laughs> President of Church, even in church we have Secretary Generals. So Victory Ministries also has a National Secretary. And that is uh, Pastor Cyrus. Where are you, Pastor Cyrus? <laughs> he is... He is the General Secretary for the Governing Council of Victory Ministries, but he's also our Senior Pastor for the Kitwe Church, which I pastored for so many years. And thank you, all the pastors whose names I don't have, and I know that it's difficult to introduce Madame Narumango because she's also a doubler like me. Uh, now they have given us a new name of a hybrid. Madam Nalumango, I will introduce you from the church side, okay? She is a minister of the gospel together with her dear wife and her husband. <laughs> Why don't you stand? <laughs> Mr. Nalumango, pastor, bishop, thank you so much. You may be seated. I did that deliberately to show the doubling of Mrs. Nalumango. She's a doubler. I would also now like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues, my friends in the political arena. I'm honored to have here tonight a dear friend of mine, a brother, a leader in our nation, the president of the UN, UPND, President Hakainde Hichilema, with us today. Amen. I'm also delighted to introduce my dear friend and a colleague, and the president of the ADD, the ADD, President Milupi, with his dear wife, who are here today. Where are they? I'm also delighted to introduce my dear, dear brother. We come a long way. I don't have to go into that history. The president of Rainbow Party, President Winter Kavimba, right here. I'm also delighted to have my own brother that is here, the Vice President of the UPND, the Honorable GBM, who is right here with us tonight. <laughs> and my dear sister, the former Member of Parliament for Chongwe, but now a leader in the UPND, Madam Sylvia Mastebo, she's here as well. Thank you. Is that Gary there? But Gary, you told me you'll not be here because you're in Cape Town. You flew here just, yeah. Gary is the, the whip for the opposition, and we are so glad to have 
Gary Nkombo here from the UPND. Thank you. We also have our colleagues from the MMD, the chairman of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, Madam Winnie Zalomis. Give her a big hand, please. And uh, I'll be quick, the National Secretary of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, Madam Chitika, why don't you stand as well? And may I also acknowledge all that are present, the senior members of the National Executive Committee, for all the parties that are here, but for all the church leaders that are here from all churches, I welcome you and thank you for coming. Now you'll notice that in my introduction of politicians and church leaders, I'm one of the freest people because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. I would like us to do something quickly tonight before I speak. I would like all of us to, to, to stand. I know that my wife does not want to come here. She's afraid of this walk here. But can you strengthen yourself, sweetheart? Are you able to? Let's all stand. I'll invite my wife to come. Florence Mumbai, wife for 34 years. The Lord given us five children and three grandkids. Thank you. She told me that she does not want to come to the front, but I had to find a way to sweet talk her. Let's give the Lord a hand for this lady. Before the choir sings, I'm going to ask my wife to pray, and she's going to pray for the nation. And then after that, I'll be ready to preach. Mrs. Mumba, Florence. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And we thank you that you alone are God. You own this nation. You have drawn its borders. You know its people, and you have numbered each one of them. Father, we believe you, and we trust you that a God who's so full of love cannot ignore the cries of this nation. That, Lord, you cannot overlook the injustice, O oh God, that is currently going on. And we cry to you because you are our Savior, you are our God. And we know that, Lord God, no matter what the enemy brings against us, you will turn it around for good. And we thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And that, Lord, even as we have cried, Zambia shall be saved, you shall finish it. And we shall behold it with our eyes, O oh God. We believe you. And we believe that, Lord, you can raise up a godly leadership in this nation. That, Lord, those who cry out will not be ignored forever. But that, Lord, someone, Lord God, you will stir the heart of the king to turn it around for the comfort of the people. Lord, we honor you and we love you. And, Father, we will continue to wait upon you as we rise up, O oh God, to be active to bring about that change. Because we know that faith without works is dead. And Lord, I pray that you will stir each one of us to rise up, oh God, to be active in whatever capacity you show us. So Father, I pray today for your manservant as he stands to speak the word of God. And I know that you have called him. You have called him to speak. You have called him to prophesy over this nation. I pray that you will give us direction. And that Lord, at your word, we will rise up. And at your word, we will sit down. We honor you, almighty God, because this nation is blood washed. You have redeemed Zambia for your own, and you will show forth your glory in it. We give you praise that, Lord, we are confident that there is no way you will fail us, O oh God. We honor you. We ask your presence and your blessing. And, Father God, open our eyes to behold new things in your law, that even as your word comes forth, it will come forth in power, and you will watch over it to perform it. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Give the Lord another hand. The choir is going to sing. You may be seated in God's holy presence. As you sit, I would like to mention that we have a number of people from the ruling patriotic front that are here. Unfortunately, the names were not given. We welcome you as well. We give you a specific welcome because this is for all of us. This is for all of us. But uh, they did not give me the names, but they have just told me that uh, I noticed they're not here, that they are here as well. And we are honored to have you in his presence. In, in his presence. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda sends his, um, his warmest love and support uh, for this service. 
he was supposed to be here, but the doctors told him the weather is not too kind to him for me today. So he says he sends his love and greetings to all of us. We are not only joined by the people that are here, but we also want to welcome those many that are watching us through the live Facebook that is running right now on my Facebook page, but also Hot FM is carrying this live as we speak. We welcome that audience as well from across the country. We know that live uh, revelation television should be doing the same and airing it live. We welcome that audience as well. We also know that Prime TV is doing a delayed transmission uh, after this, they are going to run the whole service. So all those audiences around the world, we welcome you. At this moment, I want us to open our hearts and to join the Victory Choir as they minister to us before I come to bring the word of God. Choir.
another hand thank you so much choir for that they have another song but we have to proceed once again thank you for the others that have come in president Mulongoti from people's party welcome for please welcome him to the service i like your heart thank you we also of course have um, a member of central committee from the patriotic front uh, mr kelvin waliafube is here the lawyer where are you Welcome. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord. We also have um, Ambassador Wendy Sinkala. She's here. I just saw her right there. Stand up. Let them give you a big hand. And uh, we also have Ambassador Mary Zambezi. Uh, why don't you stand? Please welcome her as well. Um, I'm all things to all things. I've, I'm also an ambassador, so I have to welcome ambassador colleagues of mine. Are we ready for the word of God? This is an extremely significant day. The word confession means to repeat something over and over again. To confess is to say something that you like to see established, take place. But in order for it to come about, you have to learn the principle of repeating the same thing regardless of how boring it gets. Somebody told me, Pastor Mumba, you, it's too much with Zambia shall be saved. The more we say it, the more we confess it, the more we believe it, the more we reach out for it, the more heaven is going to respond and give us the desires of our heart. And that is a saved and blood washed nation. So when you hear us scream, Zambia shall be saved, it is not just a slogan. It's coming from a place of faith. When I sleep, I can see the Zambia that God would like to give to us. And you have to call it into this physical life. And anybody, if I call you by name and you're there, you're going to answer. When I say, Kangwachileshen, is there a congratulation here? Congratulations. The way we used to answer when I was young, we used to say, sir. <laughs> so it's the same with Zambia shall be saved. If I keep calling Zambia shall be saved, wherever that thing is, it has to respond. Because the word in my mouth, as the, as the Bible says, is as powerful as the word in God's mouth. So when you use that word and bring forth into reality what is not there, that is what we say confession. So we shall continue to confess that Zambia shall be saved until it is done. Say amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me please to the book of John chapter number 19. I'm reading from verse 17. I want to ask that maybe for the next few minutes. You give me an opportunity to speak into your life and the lives of those that have joined us on various media outlets. 
The book of John chapter number 19, I'm reading from verse 17. The Bible says, and he, and this is Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side one and Jesus in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews from the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city of Jerusalem. And it was written, this is very important, it was written in Hebrew and in Greek and also in Latin. It was written in Hebrew, Greek, and in Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews. Don't write that he is the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. And I love the answer that Pilate gave. He turns around and says, what I have written, I have written when it's inscribed and sealed with the seal of a king it's a done deal you may not have believed that he was the king of the Jews but I introduce him to you today that he truly is the king of the Jews I know that he has been accused of calling himself a king and as a matter of fact he hangs on that cross precisely for that crime of calling himself a king. And yet the one who passed judgment actually confesses and writes on what we would call in Memorial Park on the tombstone. They write Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. I feel like preaching tonight. And you know, uh, excuse me tonight because I know that as a politician I should observe certain protocols. But when I'm behind the pulpit, I'm another animal because this word, this word, even if I wanted to preach at attention, I may not succeed because of the power that it carries. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. I want to speak to you tonight. On a message that I've entitled the power of introduction. The power of introduction. Now let me take you back to the cross and the scenario that was happening. That there was a revolt, a reaction, an almost riot in Jerusalem amongst the Jews for one reason. Simply because of the title or the introduction that Pilate gave to Jesus. That brought a problem and a crisis. The question I have is that what is it in that introduction that infuriated the Jews, that made them mad, that made them upset? What was really wrong and why were they so emotionally involved when it came to reacting to that introduction? As we proceed in this message, I'm going to show you how that even for you as you listen to me tonight, the day when God is going to unveil you. The day that God is going to announce you. There is going to be a crisis. Because there are people that have decided on who you are, how far you go, and what you can become. But when God says this is he, there will be riot in your city when God reveals you. I'm talking to you in your individual capacity as an individual. But I'm also speaking to Zambia. When God unveils this country, regardless of the pain that we're going through, the deprivation, the poverty, the corruption, when God decides to introduce what Zambia is, the world will not take it kindly. And it is going to happen. So this is a message of hope. 
It's a message of hope for you as an individual, but it's also a message of hope for us as Zambians, but it's also a message of hope for Africa because I'm coming to Africa as well because we have been introduced in manners that has subjugated us to other authorities. So the Pilate's introduction of Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, brought a crisis amongst the Jews. Allow me to say today that the issue of introduction is a major issue. Don't allow any, any person to introduce you the way they want. Because an introduction has a motive. And if you keep listening to wrong introductions about yourself, before long they will bring you where you should be because they will, oh my God, help me. They will bring me, bring you to the place where they want you to be. They will introduce you. Thank you for the gracious introduction from the Reverend Sambo this evening. But Reverend Sambo would have been well within his bounds to have stood here and said, Ladies and gentlemen, in the next few minutes, I'm going to introduce a man that is going to preach to you, and his name is Nevis Mumba. Just a few things about Nevis Mumba. Nevis Mumba in 2001 ran for president of Zambia, and he failed lamentably. In 2015, he tried again and really failed. So, ladies and gentlemen, may you put your hands together as we welcome the twice failing presidential candidate. Now, you must understand that he would not have been wrong because I did stand twice. And as, as you can see, I'm not in state house, so I didn't win. But the problem with that introduction is that Reverend Samba would have supposed that I, my life is defined by my temporal setbacks. I am not... If I failed yesterday, the Bible says seven times you shall fall, but seven times you shall rise again. But your enemies, have you noticed how people, when they're introducing you, they say, oh, that is Joyce. Remember the one who was married to that guy and they divorced? And then they, she has divorced three times. What on earth has that got to do with introducing that person? Why do you have to go to the divorces? Why don't you talk about how she has helped the poor in Kalingalinga? Why don't you talk about her faith in God? Why do you capitalize on her setbacks? That's what they have done to you. And tonight, we are going to put a break to that. You are not a sum total of your failures. Temporal setbacks are not supposed to pull you back. But the world will always want to give you a name. There's a young man in the Bible who was blind. And uh, his name, we don't know. But he's a son of Timaeus. But the Bible tells us, even myself when I preach, I call him blind Bartimaeus. We use his circumstance, his negativity, to define who he is. So we don't even know his name. He's just blind Bartimaeus. Some of you, you are blind somebody, lame somebody, failed somebody, divorced somebody. But I've come to town to let you know something is about to change here tonight. <laughs> Introduction is everything. That's why people do business cards. Introduction is everything. And that's why when somebody, whenever I travel all over the world and they introduce me wrongly, I correct it and reintroduce myself. You know why that is important? Because they're going to give you what they want. I'm going to step out and say, yes, I failed yesterday, but I am here facing tomorrow with renewed faith. That's the same for Zambia. That's the same for Africa. I'll give you a short story before I move into the message. Many years ago in the 70s, those of my age and generation that are here, there was a movie that came out that was extremely popular amongst us, the youth of that time. And it was, intro it was called Roots, if you remember. Roots is a movie that depicted the moving of slaves from West Africa to the shores of the United States. 
How they were carried like sardines and like fish in those slave ships all the way to the United States. The story is around a man who is called Kunta Kinte. A man who had royal blood in him where he came from. But when they hit the shores of the United States, every slave owner knew that you can never keep a slave a slave until you cut off their history. So the first thing they did when they bought a slave is to change the name. If you are Kunta Kinte, they'll give you the name of your master who has bought you. Moving from that moment, they have cut you away from who you are, from your dignity, from your hope, from your identity, and you become a man at sea who can be taught to go anywhere by anybody and you will follow. A slave must be broken into. Kunta Kinte is a story that changed my life. Because as I watched him, they gave him the name Toby. I remember one day the master came to him and said, Toby. And he said, I'm not Toby, I'm Kunta. <laughs> We're about to fight for our identity tonight. We're going to pay the highest price, Zambia, in order for Zambia to be saved. They have told us we are finished as a country. And I know that. Being an opposition, I can say that. But I am no longer looking just at being finished. I'm looking at what God has spoken to me. When everything looks gone, we draw back into the history of who we are. A Christian people. A people that fear God. And if we call on him, he shall answer us. Weeping men do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We may be down today, but we're going to be up tomorrow. And I speak hope in this nation. I speak hope in this country. I speak hope in our young people. I speak hope in the ladies. I speak hope in every Zambian. Zambia shall be saved. The master said, you are Toby. Toby, he said, I'm not Toby. What's wrong? He said, I'm Kunta. Oh my God, this is something I love. History, the movie goes on. They tied him on a pole and, and called all the black slaves to come and watch the spectacle of breaking this nigger. Before you use a horse, those of you that know anything about horse racing, you got to break into it. If you don't break into it, it will, when you jump on it, it will throw you off. So they, they train it until it's broken into and it can carry a human being. I know a lot of us don't do horses. But a slave when they came from the ship the slave ship, there were a bunch of riots. They realized they were in a strange land. They wanted to go back to their country. They obeyed nobody. They talked about stuff that infuriated the owners. And it was the responsibility of the owners to break them, to make them submit, to kill their will, and make them real slaves. In order to do that, when he refused to be called Toby, they tied his hand on it, Paul, for the younger generation that never saw that movie. I understand you can still Google it and watch it. They tied his hands, and they beat life out of him. His back oozing with blood. And when the slave owner thought that he had done a good job, he turns to this man mad in blood and said, what is your name? All that he, all that he needed to say was Toby. If he said Toby, he would be free. But even with blood on his face, he said, Kunta. Then he continued to beat him and beat life out of him. I couldn't watch it anymore because I was going like this because those of you that have watched the passion of the Christ when they beat up Jesus with that thing with, with, with those ivory stuff that when you hit then you pull the skin 
with those little things. I couldn't watch it. I said to myself, why don't you say Toby? I was watching say, just say Toby. Please, just say Toby. And when he was almost dead, I was sure he was going to say Toby. And the master comes to him and said, what is your name? In that dying voice, he said, my name is Kunta Kinte. I want to speak to Zambia today. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know where you're coming from, your impact in this nation shall be limited. Time has come for us to realize that if your introduction has taken away from who you are, Time has come for you to say, my name is Kunta. No, but we'll give you money, then you can change your mind. My name is Kunta. We are looking for Kuntas in Zambia. We have so few Kuntas in the church. We have so few Kuntas in pastoral positions that can say on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I know where I'm from and I know where I'm going. I came from the father and I'm going back to the father. A person who knows who they are is a dangerous person. Can't buy him with money. He's a dangerous person. Because he doesn't stand on everything. He stands on principle. He stands on principle. And may God give us men and women of principle in this nation. He stands on principle. And I say this because the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ. What Jesus knew is this. And I want you to know it. Jesus knew that he existed before he was born. Now that's powerful. Because if the moment I know that, my walk changes. Even my friends change. I was there before anything came about. So you don't tell me what to do because I know that I didn't come from Chinsali. I came from God. Of course I come from Chinsali physically speaking. But the Bible says about Jesus, he knew who he was. The Bible says. In the book of John chapter 8 and 58, the Bible talks about this Jesus saying to the Jews, before Abraham was, I am. Now, Jews understood that. Jews understood that because in their history, when Moses was saying, God, how am I going to explain to the Jewish people who sent me? Because God said to Moses, go and let my people go like Bishop and Father Lupupa said. He said, Moses, go and let my people, say, let my people go. He said, but how are they going to believe me? He said, tell them, I am, has sent me. Then Jesus, many years later, he says, before Abraham was, I am. Now, the Bible says they picked stones to stone him. Why? Because they understood. That he's calling himself God. Because I am is the name of God. So the criminal case against Jesus. Was that according to them. He called himself God. It was treason then. It is treason now. Don't play with. <laughs> you know treason. Is especially the kings of those days. So when the king is about to be born, you realize Jesus was being hunted like an animal when they saw that somebody was being born who was a king. But the Bible says that before Abraham was, I am. And I'm going to move quickly now because of time. But I want you to understand that that in itself gave Jesus the authority to stand in the midst of a fire. He was with God before the beginning of time. Now let me shock you with this as well. Even you. You were actually born. You were actually given the kingship, the authority, before your father told your mother, turn around at midnight. 
before that happened, God had already called you. Because Jeremiah 1, 5 says to Jeremiah, I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. What in the world does that mean? What in the world does that mean? God is saying, I knew you. Pastor Chiroba, God knew you before your dad ever thought about having a child. That makes you special. I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb and I called you to be a prophet to the nations. What am I talking about? I want Zambia to know itself because Zambia is you. If you know who you are, you can win battles because you, you we, are, we are on a war path. A war is made up of many battles. You lose some battles, but you must win the war. And this is the point that I want to make today, that God knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. And because of that, I am not going to allow anything temporal that has just come about to divide us as a people. Even our political parties, MMD came in 1991, but I was there before I was even born and God called me into kingship. So, whenever you become what God has called you, it's not that political party you belong to. No, 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 no. Because that came yesterday. It's what God said in the beginning about you that you are going to navigate through all these which the Zambians call snakes and ladders until you get where God wants you to be. That is why this hatred in our country that is based on political affiliation, race and tribal differences is so cheap because this is so current. I'm not going to allow a baby situation to interfere with who I have been, I am, that God said I am. I said to all of us, if Zambia shall be saved, let's look at our individual purpose. You have a purpose. It was not given to you last year. It was given to you before the foundation of the world. That is why when you walk, you walk knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Even when they rise up against you, they may win a few battles against you, but at the end of the day, you shall overcome. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the introduction becomes easy to challenge if you know who you are. And Jesus knew who he was. The prophet Jeremiah knew who he was. I hope you know who you are. Because every time I wake up, I, I say Zambia shall be saved. God called me to this thing. And I am married to this dream because God coiled me. That's why sometimes when people say, never leave church to do politics or leave politics to do church. It's like saying, never how do I do this and leave? Chimono Kutila, Leka Florence, Elone Kushafiavana, because Ubana Florence is a lot of work. Just make sure you spend all your time raising your children. That's the way we think. We have compartments that have destroyed us. But you have to know who you are, what God has called you. Stand on it. Not everybody's going to understand you, but if it's from God, you shall overcome. And I think that what I've said to you today is that people are ready to introduce you. And I, I'm going to come not only to Zambia, but this is where the African race is. We've been told who we are and we behave like that. We have no power to fight for what is our own. Even the riches we have in our country, we surrender them because they have told us we can't manage our own affairs. But I've come to town to let you know as I declare Zambia shall be saved, that a new nation is rising. A nation that knows its God-given responsibility. So we've looked at Jesus was born a king. I want to suggest that you were born a king. You were born as the head and not the tail. You were born to overcome, the Bible says, so that you can dominate, to have dominion. That's what God created you for. Not a wimp. Everything, everyone can whip you. No, no, know who you are in God. If you can't fight on your own, ask God to fight for you. 
Brother Nevers, what are you talking about tonight? I'm talking about introduction. How we have been introduced to ourselves, about ourselves, and we have lost it. Jesus, from the moment he was born, because he was already king before he was born, the spirit world, church, hear me, Christians, you understand this. The spirit world is one world. Did you hear what I said? The spirit world is one world. In other words, a witch doctor can go into his trance and look into the spirit world and he can see things in the spirit. A prophet can look into the same spirit because it's one. They're not, there's not one spirit world for devils and one spirit world for the righteous. It's one. So they can also look in the same and see the same thing. That is why the devil knows those people upon whose lives there is a call and an anointing. It's because his life is marked. And the devil knows if we turn this one loose, Zambia shall be saved. Or Africa shall be saved. We got to make sure we block this so that it doesn't move. The devil knows you. He knows the strength you have. The anointing you have. The grace you have. And he will fight you. Jesus, even before he was born, he was rejected by his own father of all people. Joseph said, ah, this ain't my key. I don't remember doing nothing with Mary. This ain't my job. And you know, it became so ugly that heaven had to you're not involved. Let me be blunt with you. Let me really be blunt with you. You know that really God involves us just for the process. He doesn't need us. Because he already made him and called him and made him king before he was born. So listen to me. Those of you that are saying, Brother Nevers, I was born from what I hear that my mother went to a tavern and there's some man hit on her and that night they had a one night stand and I'm the result of that birth. And therefore the Pentecostals preach that look, you are not anything because you were born out of adultery or sin. I have news for you. I don't care where your father came from. I don't even care what his name is or whether you know him or you don't. The idea is that you were prepared by God. Then God looks for somebody who is going to use so that you can be born. I don't care how you were born. The hand of God is on your life. As long as you are born, he knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. So you husbands, don't get too proud at Ndimaome's son. He can bypass you. Because that baby you have was there before. But the Bible says Joseph rejected his own son until after negotiations. Then he agreed. He said, okay, for now I'll stay with this because the angel has told me. This Jesus, because he was born king, if you look at his life, it brings tears to your eyes. And I want to say to the church, many times we... When we look at somebody going through trials and tribulations, we conclude in our limited theological understanding that God has left him. If God had been with him, these things would not happen. The Bible teaches the opposite. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I've heard people say, oh, poor guy. My Lord, but Steffi, my Lord, I'm we cut up. It's my love, we cut up. My love, I cut up. Remember what your poor chops, poor chops. When somebody's blood is coming out, don't conclude that Ali Shama. It was Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Uh -huh. But the Lord, the 
deliver it. Like Jesus, I'm coming to that. This is a powerful man. I can dance on my own. Because Jesus went through the tribulations. But the Lord on that day, when he was introduced, delivered him from everything. So, this Jesus was so mistreated that in ministry, he was called a drunkard. He was called a demon-possessed man just because he was a son of God. This Jesus went through things that are so painful. In one night, they took him to court and changed all the laws of Rome in order to seek a conviction. Broke every law that they themselves made and put treason on him. Treason because they say he calls himself God. He says he is the king. And I want you to keep this in mind. Jesus' life was so full of sorrow. The Bible calls him a man of sorrows. An election was called between Jesus and Barabbas, a criminal who had stolen and killed people. When they counted the votes, Barabbas won with a landslide. Jesus lost. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And I want to say to Zambia, I want to say to you, regardless of what you go through, stay strong. Keep going. With blood on your face, keep going. With humiliation, keep going. When people turn against you, keep going. Because at some point, he shall deliver you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Barabbas won the election. And Jesus said, yes, yes, yes. He has won. Because in this world, you shall have tribulation. So the authorities of the world are determined to change your identity. You, some of you that watched the Passion of the Christ, you remember how they demonstrated the kind of brutality that was meted against Jesus. To show that if Jesus had a way, he could have given up. But I like what Martin Luther King Jr. says. He says, in the quest for life and for your vision, to go where God has called you to go, Fly if you can fly. He said, if you can't fly, run as you move forward. He said, but if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl for heaven's sake. But if you can't crawl, do something but keep moving. Because your future does not come easy. And I have come to let you know that whipping men do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. You may weep today. But let me now come to the conclusion of the matter. He was born king. Jesus was. He knew who he was. Nobody could introduce him any other way. Secondly, he was rejected as king by the world. Like any one of you who is called to become anything. Their brothers reject you. The Bible says Jesus was not respected in his, in his own town. Ah, he cannot be. So the Bible tells us Jesus knew who he was. And because he knew who he was, it was hard for him to feel rejected. Even at the height of it. But let me say this. All that has happened to you. All that is happening to Zambia, and I'm coming to Zambia in a few minutes, it's only a setup. God has set you up. It's only but a setup. What am I talking about? God now started to prepare for the grand introduction of Jesus Christ. God is, has got a sense of humor. He waits for all your friends who had called you by the name they want you to be known by. Who had prescribed your future according to how far they want you to go. 
He brings them to the table. In the book of Psalms, he prepares the table in the presence of your enemies. You know what that means? He calls all those who want to make you fail. He makes them present. They will not die. The Holy Spirit has told me, stop right there. They will not die until their introduction is trashed by the Lord. I know who I am. I know where I'm coming from. And therefore, every battle I fight, it's that thing that keeps me going. That this punishment will end someday, but I'm going to get where I'm going. But Jesus, his day was coming. When God decided to set up some kind of theater on which he was now going to introduce his son as the king of the Jews. Listen to this now. The Bible says they charged him with treason and they falsely accused him of things he didn't do and then they made harsh decisions. Let us crucify him using the ugliest style of death. The Romans used to kill only criminals, hardcore criminals by crucifixion. Just like in the United States of America, when they used a, an electric chair, in the Roman days, they would use the cross. The cross does not only identify with Jesus. It was there before Jesus. Any criminal whom they thought was too much was crucified on the cross. But I want you to follow me now because I'm going to land in a few minutes. God allowed them to use the tree, the cross, for the sake of elevation. Then God decided and allowed them. Without him, they were just saying, because the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And the Lord tends it with a so ever he willeth. So he was speaking to Pilate and his people. Kill him by the cross. They didn't know why. But God was talking about visibility. They didn't know that. Then they said we are going to put him on the hill of Golgotha. For elevation. A tree on top of a hill. Listen to this, is fantastic. My God is a God of style. When the devil starts to rejoice, we've got him. We've got him. God is saying, uh-huh, you wait, the third day is coming. So I want you to see this. Not only was he on a tree, not only was he on a hill, the Bible says, Golgotha was at the crossing of three roads that entered Jerusalem, coming from all directions. You could not enter Jerusalem without passing by the foot of the hill of Golgotha. Meaning it doesn't matter where they were coming from, Samaria, wherever, they, those three parts met there by the hill. And watch this. Then the Bible says, then the king wrote the inscription in three languages, talk about prime time publicity. If there was television that day, that was it. And it was in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Because nobody who walked through there could miss one of those languages. God's showtime had come. It was, they have all played the game on you. They have all rejected you. They have all called you names. They have all said you are a failure. They have said you are nobody. But God is at work preparing a showdown. Now, why were they mad about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the king of the Jews? Because they knew that Jews had no king. The king of the Jews was God. So by saying he is the king of the Jews, by implication, 
He's saying he's God. Then they remembered his rhetoric. When he was saying before Abraham was, I am. They said, this man, even in death, now he's declared who he is. Listen, I think that we are at a place where Africa needs to realize that we've been attacked from many fronts. What we go through today as the African people on this continent is not a joke. That is why any movement that has begun, that has changed things, whether it's America to bring the white man to a place where he recognizes the black man is equal, he used Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. who stood his ground and said we were all created equal. Some, it has to be a Jew or some reverend that can be able to stand up without fear and declare that. But I want you to understand this. It is important that you realize that those of you who are students of history know that the black man has been beaten into obedience by the international community. We even fight and laugh at each other because of how low we are. Are you aware that, and I'm not going to stay on this because it's for another day and my time is almost up, but I want you to remember that those of you that read history of the Renaissance, if I were to show you on the screen, Jesus Christ before the 1400s was totally black. Those were the imprints and the printings of Jesus. During the days of Da Vinci and when they were drawing Michelangelo and they started, this renaissance was coming. They decided to change Jesus' complexion to a white blonde man with long hair. You ask me why? It's about introduction. Because then they're going to tell you, Jesus belongs to us. So you are submitted to us. And history has been created by those with money and power. They have described the way you look at life. They create your environment. They are the ones who pay the painters to paint. So that future generations can be deceived. That's why Africa is a dangerous place. The whole world cannot rise up against the continent in the manner they have. At least there is something here. And I can assure you by the prophetic word, that season for Africa is close. But if I say Africa is close, it means Zambia is involved. I know that we are in trouble as a country. We are living in a continent where African nations are failing to govern themselves. Corruption is at the heel. We hate each other, kill each other. Africa seems to, they can't even build their own roads. And yet they have money. There is no way the United Kingdom can be richer than Zambia. They don't even have a single mineral. How on earth can they be? It's not possible. Smaller than us. We have everything. In our region, 40% of water. But what is the problem with Africa? They have introduced us to ourselves that we can't achieve without the man. I, was, I, did, I wasn't liked when I preached the message, the restoration of the blacksmith, smith, uh, blacksmith on, the, on television many years ago. But I did say, you guys, you go and import democracy then a young man of 25 years has to come every year from Washington to teach our fathers on how to do democracy because they have subdued us. We can think of ourselves. They have changed the history. Why are they afraid of you? Because to every plan, God has a full back. I said in Kitwe that the world has gone through phases. That those of you that used to go to London those early days, when you came back, we all wanted to touch your skin. So, London, yeah. So, because we were so intrigued by anybody who comes from London. But he comes back and creates.
creates a spectacle in the village. Because at that time, England was the place to go. But God is not stationary. There's a time when the cameras were on England. Everybody spoke England. They ruled almost the entire world. But life is not stagnant. Just like Rome is no longer there. Just like Egypt is no longer there. The United Kingdom is, you can go to the UK seven times and come back and they won't even greet you because they don't care anymore. Because UK, UK. No, I went to UK. So what? I've just come from Chinsali. That's just the way it is. Why? Because the limelight has moved from the UK. Life has seasons. There was a season for the UK. Then it moved to the United States. I just jetted in from New York. You remember those sentences? I just jetted in from New York as though you would walk from New York. But you were trying to tell them, look at me. I was in the Big Apple. Because that's where everybody wanted to go. Anything that happened there was fashion. Michael Jackson would rip up all his trousers and only one thing is left and he's going like this. Everybody, including Aba Kwachoshi, they are going like this. Why? Because that's the place where it is happening. And the church was not spared. We go to America, hear these preachers preach. We come back to preach in Kalingalinga. Where well, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming on scene. On the scene, Kalingalinga, speak Nyanja so that they can hear. But we are, we are copycats because it's all happening in America. All oh, this brown came from New York. Who cares? But the good news is that God gave America a road at Donald Trump. And Donald says, Africans go back to Africa. America first. That's one of the statements I really love from him. From my point of view as a pan-Africanist and as an evangelist. I love it. I prayed for a long time for God to give America a president who chase us. He said, go back to your whole nations. I won't use the other word in church. Go back to your whole nations. We are mad at him. But the truth of the matter is that God has to use somebody to move the cameras from America to the last bastion. In the beginning, when Jesus' life was in danger, God sought refuge for his son in Africa. He decided to come to Egypt and said, can you hide him for a while until Herod dies? He didn't pay any fee, any lodging fees. We accommodated his son. And God is no better of any man. And I know that towards the end of the age, when God looks around and says, now, the last act, the third act, is a continent that has not been touched yet. The resources are intact. Their bodies are strong. They were born kings, but they were rejected as kings. They were punished as slaves. But I'm going to create a cross and put them on a hill. Under two, three parts. And write it in all the names with the internet with us. The three languages are taken care of. Because as I preach now, we got a message from Scandinavia just before I came on the platform. That they were keeping vigil to listen to this message. Why? Because now we are crucified on a hill. When they hear an African preach. It's like sweetness. Because in London they used to preach. But now when you hear them preach, they are so busy with everything. That they think to be a Christian is, 
something for the poor. And that's why I said to you that God has blessed this country. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It does not matter at what station I go to in life, I'll preach this gospel. I preached it when I worked in government. On Sundays I preached. And I will not stop because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Now here is the point I want to make. We come to the place now where God says the lights are now on Africa. The economies are failing. Opposition political parties all over Africa are having a wonderful time. Because they don't even have to think or read. Everything is wrong. Every, I'm not talking about just Zambia. Everywhere, everything is wrong. I mean, the money is shrinking. People are getting poor. I mean, to be an opposition in Africa is easy. From that point of view, not the jail point of view. But from the point of view of being able to identify things that are not, But it's all over Africa. But the Bible promises us, when it all looks gone and dead, that's when God shows up. All these are signs that there is a wind that is about to blow. And nobody can stop this wind. I was in Zimbabwe just before there was a change of government and I was preaching. I said, there's a wind coming. I went to South Africa, Clement. I was preaching all during the day of the crossover from 31st to 1st of January. And I said, I hear a wind. And this wind is gaining speed. Things that should happen in one year will be happening in one week. I said, I see Zimbabwe. I see South Africa. I see Kenya. I see Zambia. I was seeing the countries and I was repeating them. You were there in the service. Because God put me in that trance and I was seeing it. And it's because of this that we should not give up on our nations. We should not give up on our country. Weeping men do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So I come to you today to let you know that yes, we are where we are, but we are going somewhere. The theme Zambia shall be saved is meant to prepare us with hope that regardless of what's going on, if we can stay strong in our faith in God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I want to tell a little story and I'll close. Many years ago, I think it was 88, I don't remember. Zambia Airways introduced the first flight to New York. We bought a DC-10 and we obtained a route directly from Lusaka. We stopped over in Cape Verde and went across to New York. It was a day of great pride. Through so many things, I... I happened to be one of those who was on the maiden flight. But when I sat there and I heard the booming voice of a Zambian pilot by the name of Captain Mulundika, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. The pride that came to me because now we were not going to Luanda or going to, to Lilongwe. No, 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 no. We were going to take off from Zambia to the U.S. When we arrived in New York, there was a great celebration. People were coming as because it was the fl first flight from Zambia. And I was there and then I was supposed to connect to Texas. So I went upstairs and started to have coffee. And while I was waiting, something caught my attention and every preacher is observant. And as I sat there because I was waiting for my flight, something caught my attention. I saw planes, small planes, come from the parking bay and go to the runway and turn this way and take off. Now that's normal, but I was attracted to that. Another one comes, turns and takes off. Another one comes and takes off. Then I saw something that changed my life and gave me hope. At that time, the Jumbo Jet 747s were new. And then I saw a Jumbo Jet 
747 coming from the parking bay going towards the runway. Then once it hit the runway, instead of going this way, it went the opposite direction. Then I said, maybe there's another runway there. So I kept observing as it went, flapping its mighty wings. Then as I watched, I saw it go and turn and face the same highway. Where I was, I started to see the Rolls Royce engines begin to vibrate. The power of that bird was amazing. The sound was amazing. Then it began to take off. As it came and gathered speed, I could not believe the power with which it took off. The Lord said to me, don't worry, Africa may be late. Let the small countries take off. They are let them take off. Just, just wait, wait, wait. Let them take off. And Africa is too big to, to take off on that size of runway. It's too short. Africa needs space because these engines are too powerful. So we look like we are backsliding. We look like we are the dark continent. Everyone is making progress, but we are going backwards. Everyone is celebrating takeoffs, what we are celebrating backwardness. But because we are creating enough runway, I have a message for Zambia. Whippy men do it for a night. Our slowness does not mean we are nothing. Our slowness is telling us the day we're going to take off, the world shall watch. In Jesus' name. I want us all to stand to our feet with our hands raised toward heaven. I have said a lot of things here tonight, but I speak to the soul of my nation. That yes, we have been resisted, but our season is almost here. Don't you lose hope concerning this country. God is going to save this nation. Whether we like it or not, we declare it Christian and we are going to remain committed to it. Every eye is closed. I want the choir behind me. We're going to worship God just for a few moments. And I want to pray for people before we leave. Listen, the anointing of God is the same. If God can save a crooked guy like me, if you had known me when I was in Livingston at school, and now to see me preach, you'll be shocked. But what changed that never smumba is this gospel. And if this gospel can change me, then it can change the nation as well. Jesus said, according to your faith. Some of you believe the gospel can only give you money when you pray. Or babies if you can't have babies. But you need to have faith for nations. And I believe that the same God who is healing our nation can save your life, set you free, and bring you into God's kingdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. Every eye is closed as I prepare to pray and I want the choir to just worship with me. You're saying, Brother Nevers, I'm here tonight. I know that I want to pray for my country to be saved. But I first need to make sure I'm walking with God. My life is on schedule. That if Jesus were to come today, I'll be ready to be in his presence. What does it benefit you to gain the whole world but lose your soul? What is the world for? If all you live for are worldly goods, but you don't have a reason good enough to live for. If you know God, you wake up with purpose. But if you don't know God, if you don't have money in your pocket, you want to kill yourself. But God wants to save you and change you. I want to pray for you with every eye closed now. You say, Brother Nevis, 
Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I want my life to be right with God. Just raise your hand wherever you are. I want to pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are hands all over this place. God bless you. 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 I see all those hands. All those hands. Because you're saying, I'm not here for sure. I'm here for God. We are not here for any setup to impress anybody. We are here to honor God. Before God, we are all but his people. Just lift your hands. And I want you to pray this prayer after me as loudly as you can. I think the television guys, you, I would disturb you if, if the people came here, right? Pastor Truba. Just raise your hand where you are and let us pray together. Say, dear Heavenly Father, louder, dear Heavenly Father, I receive your word today. I realize that I'm a sinner. But this night, I've heard your word. I've made a choice to give my life to you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Change me. Save me. Heal me. Introduce me. Like you introduced me. Like you introduced before the foundation of the world, the I am yours now. I am yours I'm a now. child of God now. Of I God. repent of my sin. I, I of my come sin. to you come to in you. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray that you may touch every man and every woman that has said yes to you. Yes, Lord. Change them. Yes, Lord. Save them. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I want all the ashes to come to the front. All the ashes come here and face the crowd. This is, listen, there's no Zambia shall be saved if individuals can't get saved. Oh, yes. Zambia is people. And if people don't know God, Zambia will not know God. Zambia cannot be a Christian nation when there are no Christians in the country. Oh, and Christianity has been so diluted today. Some of us think because I go to church, then I'm a child of God. No, no, you need to do more than that by saying, Jesus, come into my life. So I've asked these people to come here. And those of you that raise your hands, one after one, just one after the other, while we worship God, I want you to step forward and start, stand here. And, I, I, and this is not to embarrass you. I remember many years ago when I gave my life to Christ, I stepped out from the back and walked all the way to the front. Remember, I was the regimental sergeant major for the cadets in southern province. And I had command over all the cadets in southern province. And yet when I heard the call of God, I knew my sergeants, my staff sergeants, my, uh, uh, my corporals and lance corporals were going to laugh at me because I was too high there. But when God called me, I stepped out from the back. With my regimental sergeant major rank and gave my life to Jesus Christ. I've never looked back since. And today, let's humble ourselves and say, Lord, change me. Because through you, the cry for Zambia shall be saved, shall be realized. Every eye closed as we worship. You don't have to close your eyes, but I want those that pray to receive Christ. These people are waiting for you. I want some men. Pastors, come here and help me. You know, some men, some, some people would like to talk to men as well. Pastors, all of you come to the front and help here. Because there were, there were dozens of people that raised their hands. And they need somebody they can talk to. Just come and talk to somebody about this decision. Pastors, come and line up right here and start to talk to someone. We're going to worship God. And as we worship, please, I ask that at least for the next five, seven minutes, no one leaves. No one moves. Let's finish this. This is probably one of the most important things that God told me to do. Because it's through you that Zambia shall be saved. We're going to worship God. All of you that raise your hand, just step to the front. And stand in front of any one of these and hold their hands. And just let them whisper a prayer over you. And they may give you some instruction as well. These are trained ministers of the gospel. So let's worship God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You 
people come now to the front all of you that raise your hands come do not be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ he died publicly for you you can walk publicly for him as well come right now because people want to pray for you all of you that raise your hands come right now we want to pray with you there they come give the Lord a hand as they come there they come God bless you there they come now give the Lord a big hand as they come to the front keep coming keep coming keep coming keep coming somebody wants to pray with you tonight something somebody wants to pray for you tonight mighty God you are awesome upon our country. May Zambia be healed. May Zambia be saved. Every cancer be gone in Jesus name. And every condition that has crippled your life I command it to bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. As I come going out the, uh, the message that was preached tonight is uh, ready on sale on uh, CDs and then we have uh, DVDs for the message that was preached uh, uh, in, 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 the, in Kitwe at the Zambia Shabby Saved Conference so just visit our booth outside and if you collected these uh, plate forms if you have filled it in kindly leave it at the information desk outside as you go God bless you Oh, awesome. 